Once again, we're going to be revisiting our good old friend, Bright Side. Anyways, enjoy. Ten extinct animals who should never revive from the dead. And this looks like what seems to be a human embryo. We're already starting off just great. But, you know, this video is from 2018, so it isn't as ridiculous as that one where right side claims Spinosaurus sail was used to store water. Not really a sail, but it's a hump. You get what I mean. De-extinction is the process of bringing extinct animals back to life. I think this term is called reviving. It seems an outrageous and ridiculous concept, because we're talking about animals that were wiped out thousands or millions of years ago. You're showing all these crazy creatures from different movie clips, which is kind of getting to my nerves already. Yet scientists are serious about making it a reality. They even have a list of candidates, which includes the woolly mammoth, dodo, mastodon, and Tasmanian tiger. The better way to call the latter is thylacine. This topic was discussed at the National Geographic-sponsored TED conference held in 2013. The selection is based on the following criteria. It should hold an important ecological function. There's access to its tissue with good quality DNA samples. It can be reintroduced into the world. It should be desirable and beloved by humans. But we're 101% sure that the extinct animals we'll show you in this video are not desirable and will not be loved by humans. They should never be on the de-extinction list. I feel like the list is going to include a lot of these crazy animals like Hallucigenia, which have been extinct for way too long to be brought back. Before we start going down prehistoric memory lane, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the little notification bell so that you can be the first to watch the latest videos from Brightside. Let's start our countdown of 10 extinct animals we should never revive from the dead. Number 10, Meganura. It's very common among lists and it's way too old. It is extinct for way too long to be brought back, just like non-avian dinosaurs. Early dragonflies were not as cute as they are today. Meganura, which was actually a griffin fly, was a bit smaller than a crow and had a wingspan of about 2.3 feet. The Asian atlas moth is less than half its size. That is one big bug. How did it grow that large? It had something to do with the atmosphere's higher oxygen content of 300 million years ago. Phew, I was scared for a second because I thought Bright Side set 200 million years ago, um, and upon hearing that more closely, they said 300 million years ago, which is fine. This gigantic dragonfly-like insect that lived during the Carboniferous period existed in an atmosphere with 35% oxygen content compared to 21% today. According to paleobiologist Matthew Clapham, the higher oxygen content helped fuel the prehistoric insect's massive body. So what's so scary about an insect that's as big as a bird? Nothing. There's really nothing remotely terrifying about the Meganura. If it had a wingspan of a large bird, just treat it as a large bird. They were carnivores like their cousin dragonflies. Omega Nura's diet consisted of insects, invertebrates, and small amphibians. Number nine, Phoberomus pattersoni. This is an animal that could be brought back from the dead because it went extinct at around 6.8 million years ago. Guinea pigs are smart and adorable little rodents. However, 8 million years ago, you would never have considered bringing them home with you as pets. Phoberomus pattersoni, also known as Guineazilla, weighed 1,500 pounds and was 4.9 feet tall. A Guineazilla indeed. Say that to the Spiderzilla from Minecraft. Phoberomus pattersoni looked like a buffalo from afar. Except the buffalo has horns and has a much more robust body and having a less defined tail. You literally showed it with the animal side by side. And when it stood on all fours, its total length was 14.7 feet. Guineazillas were herbivores with 7.8 inch long incisor teeth and they may have been semi-aquatic like the capybara, the largest living rodent. 
Its main food source may have been sea grasses, and its habitat was near an ancient river system where reeds and grasses flourished. So yeah, this Guineazilla wasn't that terrifying because it only ate plants. Ironically, it just makes this even more threatening and more dangerous. Just look at these rhinos and horses and all those herbivores attacking predators. But it'd be impossible not to scream if you saw a buffalo-like rodent charging at you. Number 8, Dunkleosteus. There's always those awkward delays between showing whatever number and seeing that. This was an armor-plated fish that ate its own kind. In short, a prehistoric cannibal. Dunkleosteus was not a part of the shark family, but was an arthropod or placoderm fish. What? Did you say that Dunkleosteus was an arthropod? This is just incredibly confusing. Okay, Brightside just made a ridiculous statement. I guess that's to be expected, but it's 2018. It's not 2022. I should have expected not much. It existed during the late Devonian period, which was about 380 to 360 million years ago. Dunkleosteus held the record for being the top predator of its time. It was also one of the top predators of the Paleozoic era. This armored fish could grow up to 33 feet, which is considered outdated today, but it's fine for 2018. And instead of a set of sharp teeth, it had two long bony blades. Its bite was as powerful as that of the Tyrannosaurus rex and modern crocodiles. It is believed that its powerful jaws could bend metal and could bite a human's arm with extreme precision. Luckily, it became extinct, because this not-so-picky eater wouldn't even think twice about eating human meat. Would it even want to eat humans, though? Also, this one is also way too old to just bring back, because it went extinct for way too long to be brought back. At least with number 9, it can be brought back. Number 7, Helicoprion. What do you know? We have another animal that is extinct for way too long to be brought back. This was another weird toothed ancient marine animal, and it swam the deep sea 290 million years ago. It was 35 feet long, with shark like features, and was twice the size of the largest known great white shark. Helicoprion had a nickname too the buzzsaw killer. Its name means spiral saw in Greek, and it got its alias from the teeth in its lower jaw, which was similar to a circular saw. So far, this segment is fine. If I were to make this video not clickbait, I would just go and explain briefly why it's scary, quote-unquote quote, scary, quote-unquote terrifying, shouldn't be brought back, all that to convince my children audience. Interestingly, it had no teeth on its upper jaw. And yup, its tooth whorl, which consisted of 15 to 18 serrated teeth, worked like a circular saw when eating its prey. If I remember correctly, I feel like it's more of a chewing tool than some sort of actual saw blade. It may have had a shark-like appearance, but it wasn't actually a shark. So what was it? Helicoprion belonged to the chimeras, a type of cartilaginous fish. Helicoprion and the chimera belonged in the same subclass holocephali, holocephaly. However, they belong in different orders. Number 6, Deinosuchus. It's a bit more recent, but still only one animal so far on the list could technically be brought back to life. This prehistoric crocodile was an opportunistic apex predator that lived during the late Cretaceous period, about 82 million years ago. Dinosuchus belonged in the Crocodilia order, however it was not a crocodile, and it belonged to the Alligatoroidia superfamily, meaning that it is an alligatoroid, and it is more closely related to alligators than crocodiles. It was related to the alligator, and could grow up to 39 feet long. You sure just slapped in a Dinosuchus model that was more streamlined and not this. 
Denosuchus had a bulky and massive body, but that didn't make it less agile compared to modern alligators. This giant crocodile... I'll give Brightside the benefit of the doubt and say that they are confusing crocodiles with crocodilians. Whose name means terrible crocodile, preferred estuaries as its habitat and attacked like an alligator. They preyed on sea turtles and dinosaurs. I did a quick reverse image search in Google and this is supposed to be a T-Rex and Dinosuchus and T-Rex did not live with each other. Yup, you heard that right. This terrible croc could take down dinosaurs its own size. And that's based on evidence found from fossils of T-Rex's relatives, namely the Albertosaurus and Appalachiosaurus. This means that the Deinosuchus had a powerful jaw that could crush the shells of turtles and strength that could defeat other predators. Number 5. Gigantopithecus I hope Brightside has a bit of common sense and just show orangutans for Gigantopithecus, not gorillas or King Kong. Bigfoot was around during the Pleistocene epoch. I jinxed it. Dude's now just showing King Kong. About 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago. I feel like Gigantopithecus went extinct like 300,000 years ago. Gigantopithecus, which translates to big ape, was a relative of orangutans. This big ape walked in a quadrupedal stance on all fours and inhabited tropical forests in Asia. Its teeth, which were falsely branded as dragon teeth, is it pronounced dragon teeth? Dragon teeth, right? If so, whoever came up with that is just stupid. No offense. Were made to grind and chew plants, bamboo in particular. Gigantopithecus might have been like an overgrown panda, but you'd still have been intimidated by its size. It was about 9.8 feet tall and over a thousand pounds. You said Gigantopithecus was 9.8 feet tall, yet you used its length to measure 9.8 feet. Number 4, Mega Piranha. Okay, something else that could theoretically be brought back too. Do we need to say more? How about the fact that it was larger than modern piranhas and had a meaner bite force? It is more of a transitional form between a paku and a piranha. But how large was it? Mega piranhas were 2.3 feet long and weighed 20 to 30 pounds. This oversized piranha lived during the Miocene era, between 6 and 10 million years ago. I guess this estimate is a reasonable one, since it lived at around 9 to 6.8 million years ago. Besides its size, which was three times larger than a modern day black piranha, the fearsome bite of this prehistoric fish was legendary. The Mega Piranha had a bite force of 279 to 1069 pounds. You could have just used LBF as it, it more represents what you're supposed to be talking about, what you want to talk about. It's pound of force or pound force. That's about 9 to 50 times its weight. In modern times, it would be able to pierce through a turtle shell or an armored catfish's scales. But is that such an exciting comparison, considering today's piranhas have been reported to bite off the toes of unwary beachgoers? Ouch! Number 3. The Giant Short-Faced Bear I think you're going to be talking about the Arctotus simus. Hopefully I've not somehow proven wrong. There's nothing short about this prehistoric bear. Around 500,000 to 2 million years ago, the giant short-faced bear was the most powerful carnivore around. Its scientific name was Arctodus simus. Good! Alright. So far, this paleontology video, besides like one ridiculous statement, everything else is okay. And it weighed between 2,000 and 3,500 pounds, making it almost three times heavier than a polar bear. But wait until we tell you its height. Are you ready? On a quadrupedal stance, it was five to six feet. Oh, it was like an average human. But on two legs, it was 11 to 12 feet tall. What a beast. You wouldn't stand a chance of escaping from this ancient and massive bear because it could run at a speed of up to 40 miles per hour and had a reach of up to 15 feet. What was its behavior similar to? Because there are differences between the behaviors of a grizzly bear and a black bear. Number 2. Titanoboa serenjonensis 
I think that's not how you pronounce it. It's supposed to be pronounced Titanoborus cerehonensis. This was the king of all serpents, and it lived during the Paleocene Epoch about 66 to 56 million years ago. I don't think Titanoboa's time frame was that long. I think Titanoboa lived around 60 to 58 million years ago. Its length was about 40 to 45 feet, and its average weight was one and a quarter tons. Titanoboa looked like a boa constrictor, but behaved like an anaconda. The prehistoric snake's colossal size was due to the climate at the time, which was extremely warm. Doesn't mean it encountered non-avian dinosaurs like this. Look at this scene. Look at this non-avian dinosaur looking at the Titanoboa, and vice versa. Look at what is going on. Man. Just the right temperature Titanoboa needed to maintain its growth. Number 1. Megalodon. Of course it had to be the Megalodon. Who would have guessed otherwise? As always, we've saved the best for last. Megalodon was the largest shark to ever live on Earth about 2.6 million years ago. It went extinct at around 3.6 million years ago, but again, this is 2018, so 2.6 million years ago could have just been outdated. This gigantic marine carnivore beats all the animals in this video in terms of height, weight, and bite force. When you said height, I think you meant length, because I don't think anyone measures Megalodon by its height. Its estimated size was about 52 to 59 feet, and it was longer than Titanoboa by 14 feet. The giant ancient shark's weight was 70 to 100 tons. Its teeth were 5 inches to 7 inches in height, and had a bite force of 24,400 to 41,000 pounds. I don't think you should use height to measure teeth either. It just feels incredibly weird, to be honest. That's three times stronger than the T-Rex. Megalodon also had the largest meal ever, the baleen whale. The rest of the video is just bright side, just telling you to subscribe and comment, so I'm just going to skip that. But anyways, this video is not great. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all next time.